Hey, I'm Isabel. I'm a producer, songwriter, and musician based in Montreal, Canada. And in this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite time-saving tricks in Logic Pro 10. Let's get to it. Okay, first up is remove silence. Having to manually cut up a super long audio track to remove all the silent parts can be really time consuming and really tedious, but Logic's remove silence tool makes that task super easy and super quick. Let me show you. So you'll wanna open the toolbar and I've got the re remove silence tool here, but if you don't, that's okay. Just right click in a blank space, customize toolbar, and just make sure remove silence is checked and you can save it as a default if you'd like to have that tool available for all your future sessions. Select the track you'd like to remove the silence from and you can either click remove silence or the shortcut is control X. And then the remove silence window opens up and you've got all these parameters to play around with to get the edit that you're looking for. So the threshold is the DB level where the tool will start to kick in um, you can adjust the minimum time to accept as silence, the pre-attack time for how much space you'd like before the actual audio starts, and post-release time for how much uh, space you'd like after the audio is finished. So I'll just play around with these super quick to try to get the edit that I'm hoping for. And that's it, you're done. So if you'd like to do all the fades at the same time, you can go into this left-hand parameter window here and under more, you've got your fade in. Since they're all selected, it'll affect all of them. And you can add a little fade, add a little curve if you'd like. Same thing for fade out as well. And that's it, you're done. Next up is capture recording. This one hits me on an emotional level. <laughs> have you ever come up with a really cool part while you were just improvising and wish you were recording the whole time? Have you ever performed the best vocal take ever and realized you never actually hit record? Well, luckily the capture recording tool can save those performances that you thought you lost. To access the capture recording tool, just right click on your control bar, customize control bar and display, and under transport, Make sure capture recording is checked. And again, you can save it as your default if you'd like to always have that tool available. And then it shows up just next to your record button with a white circle around it. So I'm gonna listen back to the song and just improv along without hitting record. Here comes the magic. Hit capture recording, and there it is. It shows up even though you weren't recording, it was listening to what you were doing, and you can still save that cool improv that you did, even though you didn't hit record first. Now, the capture recording function is really just for MIDI, but something similar exists for audio as well. Let me show you. So under the record menu, make sure that allow quick punch in is enabled. Again, I'm just gonna listen to the playback of the song and I'm gonna pretend that I hit record way too late. All right, I'm recording a vocal. This is just a test. As you can tell, I'm not really a singer. So I haven't hit record yet, but this vocal take is just so dreamy. Oh no, I should hit record. Okay, it kicked in. So it looks like only the part after I hit record got captured, but really, if you just expand the audio region to the left, it was able to capture everything. Logic is always listening. All right, I'm recording a vocal. This is just a test. As you can tell, I'm not really a singer. <laughs> capture recording. It has saved me so many times and I hope it helps you too. Next is MIDI transform. The MIDI transform window is jam packed with a ton of awesome preset tools that help you edit and manipulate MIDI notes in the easiest and quickest way possible. So I'll open up this MIDI section here and judging by the colors, I can tell that the velocity is kind of all over the place. It's not too bad, but let's say for this particular example, I want this instrument to be just constantly at its highest velocity. 
So instead of going in and changing the velocity of each individual note, I can just open the MIDI transform window. So I can do that by hitting Command 9 or going to the Functions drop down menu in the piano roll or even in the tracks window. So I'll hit Command 9 to open the MIDI transform window. And in the drop down menu of the presets, I'm going to choose fixed velocity. And I'm going to max it out to 127. I'm going to click select and operate, and I can see it shows all the notes and max them out to 127. And there you go, that's it, it's done. You can see in the drop down menu, there's tons of really cool options to choose from that'll help speed up your workflow a bunch, and you can even create your own. The next time-saving tool is Skip Cycle Area. This tool is really handy when you wanna experiment with changing around your song structure and arrangement. Maybe you wanna hear what it sounds like when the bridge is half as long. Maybe you wanna hear what it sounds like to jump from the verse to the chorus without a pre-chorus in the middle. Instead of having to delete or mute a bunch of regions and sections, you can just skip the cycle area. All you have to do is select the section you'd like to skip. So for example, bars 13, to 17 and I'll hit command and hold it while I'm creating a cycle area and instead of that standard yellow color it turns to this black kind of fast forward Mario Kart design which is fantastic. The other way you can do that is if you just create a regular cycle area you right click it and swap left and right locators it'll also turn it into a skipped section. So I'll hit playback and you'll see it's just going to jump directly over that section. Time saving magic. All right, last up is the plugin manager. Now this tool may not be as sexy as the other tools, but it's so handy and it will help your workflow become so much quicker. So usually when you like to go and add a third party plugin, they end up all the way at the bottom. And depending on what plugins you're using, sometimes you'll have just a really kind of overwhelming long list of plugins that you have to sift through, which can get kind of annoying and time consuming. I really like using the plugin manager to get super organized. So you just go to Logic Pro, Preferences, the plugin manager. Now this is where you can Marie Kondo your plugins like a boss. You can go through all of your plugins, select and drag to a folder on the right. You can rename Logic's pre-existing folders. You can create new folders and name them whatever you want. This is your space to make your workflow as seamless and efficient as possible for you. Now, when you go to add in a plugin, you'll know exactly where it is. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that these tools help simplify and speed up your workflow. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to share other time-saving tricks. Make sure you like this video because that helps us out a ton and subscribe for more awesome videos. See ya.